Hello and welcome to the Potomac and Chesapeake Association for College and Mission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We're so glad that you're joining us today to learn about some great schools. I have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and your microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. That's why that Q&A button is so important. You can direct your questions to a specific school by including the school's name with your question, or you can leave a question for all of our representatives to answer about their programs. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening. I hope you've already attended some today and will sign up to join us for our round that follows this one as well. This presentation, like all of the other presentations, is being recorded. It will be available within about a week at that same website where you register, strivescan.com slash PCACAC. All right, well, I'm really excited to help uh, to start us off today. The first school that we're going to be hearing from will be Waynesburg University. Kristen? Thank you. Um, I am very excited to be here with you guys today. Unfortunately, I apologize. My camera is acting up, so you won't be able to see me, but you'll be able to hear me. Don't worry. Um, so I just want to go over um, who Waynesburg is, where we're located, and all of that good stuff. So um, Waynesburg is located in the southwestern corner of of Pennsylvania. So we're about an hour south of Pittsburgh, PA, and about 25 minutes north of Morgantown, West Virginia, which is where WVU is, if you're familiar. So just a quick overview of a um, little bit more in detail of who we are. We're a private Christian liberal arts university. We were founded back in 1849, so we've been around for quite some time at this point. And our mission here is to educate students to make connections between their faith, learning, and serving. So you're going to hear me talk about that um, throughout the presentation today. So first up is faith on campus. Um, this is really important to us here at Waynesburg, but it is something that is at your own pace. So students are not required to um, come from any certain faith background um, or participate in any certain way. It's really up to whatever you're comfortable doing, but there are a lot of opportunities to get involved and to grow in your faith at your years here at Waynesburg. So first up is our Campus Ministry Center. Um, that's located right in the middle of our campus. And it's a great place to just stop in throughout the day. Uh, there's usually free coffee and uh, food and all of that good stuff. Um, Fellowship of Christian Athletes is uh, more geared towards athletes, obviously, but you don't have to be an athlete to attend. And um, it's a really nice opportunity just to meet some other folks, and those are usually at 9 p.m. every other Monday. Our weekly chapel service is Tuesday mornings at 11. There aren't any other classes scheduled during that hour, so, um, you know, there, there's never going to be a conflict, but again, you're not required to attend if you're not interested. That's no problem. Um, upper room is the last thing I want to highlight, and it was actually my favorite thing when I was a student here. It's an all student-led worship service. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to lead on campus, um, and this is, is one of the big ways to do that. So on to learning, we have 70 plus major and minor concentrations. Um, within those, we do have five integrated bachelor's to master's programs. Those include athletic training, business, counseling, criminal investigation, and education. We do have a 100% um, hands-on learning um, in, in all of the de academic departments. That can either be through research or internship opportunities, clinical hours, things like that. Um, we have a 13 to 1 student to faculty ratio, so our class sizes are relatively small. You're looking at between 16 and 25 per class. We really only have about uh, 1,400 students overall. So this is a list of the majors and minors we have. If you're looking for something in particular, just keep in mind it is alphabetical, so that should help you find it quickly. Um, our top five majors are um, criminal justice, nursing, forensic science, business, and education. So if you're looking at any of those at this point, um, we're a great school to keep in mind. Um, those are really strong programs for us. 
So we do have athletics here at Waynesburg. We are a D3 school, so it does make that um, student athlete balance pretty manageable. If you love your sport and you want to continue it in college, we love that. And um, our coaches, our professors are all very supportive and helpful in that process, if that's something that you're interested in doing. So in terms of achievement awards, each student is eligible for one of these awards. Um, so you'll be considered for that when we review your application. Um, you can see the range here from 6,000 to 16,000. These are determined based off of your cumulative GPA and your test score, so SAT or ACT. Now for um, the 2022 year and this current year, obviously, as well, 2021, we will not be requiring test scores just to give you a heads up if you're a senior or if you're a junior heading in um, to senior year and you're wondering, am I going to need to take this? Uh, for Waynesburg, it's not going to be required for, for the 2022 year. Um, any out-of-state student is also eligible for $3,000 um, per year for a state scholarship. And then any Eagle Scouts, Gold, or Silver Award Girl Scouts will be eligible for that $500 dollar a year extra. So we do have quite a few competitive scholarships that students can um, apply for. Um, there's a lot more info about these on our website, so I'm not going to go into too much detail, but the Bonner Scholarship is uh, surrounded around service, if that's something that you enjoy, that you do, it's a good one to look at. Um, our Stover scholarship is for students really active in um, politics, government, history, things like that. Our founder scholarship is um, just for PA students uh, and it's it's all merit based for that one. And then our Waynesburg Christian Life Scholarship um, is for students who really want to grow in their faith. Um, I am running out of time, um, but just here's a little quick view on um, the, the tuition fees, room and board. And if you would like some more info, feel free to, to message me or reach out. Um, we are open for visits and we would obviously love to have you come and view us. Thanks so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kristen, for sharing Waynesburg University with all of us and for starting us off today. All right, we're going to be learning next about Mississippi State University. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm going to work to share my screen. Just want to make sure you guys can hear me. Yes, I can definitely okay. hear you, Grant. And we got your screen too. Looks good. Sounds good. Perfect. Thank you so Take much. It away. Um, well, as Jennifer stated, my name is Grant Nairn. I am with Mississippi State University. I serve as the Assistant Director of Recruitment. Uh, this is my sixth year uh, in this position, and I'm so excited that you all joined us this afternoon to learn a little bit more about your collegiate options. You guys do have a plethora of options here at your fingertips, and so uh, just enjoy taking a little bit of time out of your Sunday evening to join us. Um, so Mississippi State, just to give you some background knowledge of who we are and where we, what we stand for and what we do for you. We are actually a, um, we were founded as Mississippi A&M, standing for Agricultural and Mechanics, so it's the Princeton Engineering um, in 1878, but since then we've acquired over 180 different majors of study for students, and we're going to talk a little bit more about those here in just a second. Um, we are a Southeast, we are in the Southeastern Conference, and we are a Division I athletic school, so we are large. We do provide the national brand recognition and the rah-rah that comes with that. We do have about 23,000 students on our campus, so we are fairly large in that sense, but it's a double-sided sword uh, in the fact that you still get that small learning environment. So you're still at a 16 to 1 student-faculty ratio, average entering class size being about 40, 45 students. Um, so again, you get the feeling of being part of something big, but also get that intimate learning environment of knowing your peers, your faculty, and your staff. We do have 4,200 acres of campus. We are the largest institution in the state of Mississippi. This is not just our, um, like our main campus, this also includes our research institutions and research farms because we are our one top 100, 100 Carnegie Research Institution. So a bunch of fancy words for undergraduate research opportunities that would help you if you reach aspirational goals of going to graduate schools, graduate programs, or if you want to enter the job market making yourself uh, and giving you that, that, giving yourself that competitive advantage. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we have over 180 different majors uh, here at Mississippi State. They're broken into different academic colleges, as you can see listed on your screen. Um, just to kind of give you a breakdown, as I said earlier, we're, we were founded on 
to spaces of agriculture. Um, and each one of these academic colleges and majors encompasses some sort of research opportunity involved in some of the things that they're doing. So as you can see on list on your screen, um, they have like the College of Ag and Life Sciences has a lot of uh, research opportunities with USDA. Uh, they've been doing food research for over, two, over 20 years, um, being ranked in the top 5% of the country for agricultural and natural resources research and development. And basically right now they're working to eradicate food hunger and enhance food safety and quality. Uh, so that's something that's really big. Our College of Architecture, Art and Design, we are a top 25 program in all of North America for architecture, art and design. So things like graphic design, building construction, science, interior design, those are all encompassed with that uh, within architecture. Um, they do a lot of uh, work with the Carl Small Town Center, basically as an advocate for meaningful design for small towns, basically revitalizing and different things in that nature. College of Arts and Sciences, anything that ends with ology, uh, obviously that's a joke, but there are a lot of options. Our most eclectic academic college uh, with lots of good opportunities there. One in, the, one in three of the nation's meteorologists actually hold their certification from Mississippi State, so that's fun uh, and a great factor to know. College of Business, fantastic opportunities in terms of placement through international business and our entrepreneurship research opportunities. Uh, College of Engineering um, is like lead research institution for unmanned aircraft systems. Uh, they're basically writing the safety regulations for drones and what that kind of looks like in terms of delivery. And then the College of Forest Resources, Human Wildlife Conflicts, uh, Environmental Conservation, Sustainable Byproducts, a lot of great things there. So a lot of good programs to study. We encourage you to check us out when it comes to that. Uh, we are actually located in Starkville, Mississippi. So that is where you see that star located on your screen. Uh, we have over 450 student organizations. I can guarantee you that you will find somewhere to get involved during your time on campus with us. We are super accessible. We have three international airports that surround us within about a two hour radius. But we also have a regional airport that takes you on that lovely little shuttle you see on the top of your screen uh, to our regional airport. It's about 10 minutes down the road. So uh, super accessible where you're from uh, with a lot of great options with the small town vibe. So if you're interested in applying, uh, our application for the class of 2022 will go live on August 1st, midnight. Uh, so that is one o'clock for us uh, in the morning for us Eastern timers. Uh, so that's a lot of fun, but we only need your application. You can apply through our institutional application, Common App, or Coalition. We are test optional for this next year, so we will not need test scores for the purpose of admissions. Uh, but we encourage you to take it if you can, because we do offer a lot of, of merit-based scholarship opportunities so based on those test scores and GPA and academic accomplishments. Uh, in addition to that, you can see some of the different scholarship opportunities in addition that we will offer. One of the biggest ones I like to discuss is the veterans waiver you see listed. So if you are the dependent of a veteran, whether that uh, that service member is active or retired, we actually will waive the full portion of uh, out-of-state tuition. Uh, so that's something we just like to note to make sure you're aware of. We practice rolling admissions, so we do not have a hard deadline or early action deadline or early decision, but we do practice rolling. So you can apply at any point throughout the year, qualify for admission, and then also qualify for, for as much scholarship as you would have previously. We are open for visits, uh, both in person and virtual. So we encourage you to utilize your resources and take advantage of these resources. Obviously this, this picture is pre-COVID, so it gives me a little anxiety, but uh, we definitely are practicing that. Uh, and so we'd love to have you guys on campus. And I'm gonna flash my contact information up here. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I'm gonna pass it back over to my friend, Jennifer. Thank you so much, Grant, for sharing Mississippi State with all of us today. Before we head off to our next school, I just want to let all of our attendees know a few key reminders. Don't forget we have the Q&A button where you can enter a question at any time for any of our schools. You can also um, direct your questions to a specific school or schools by including the name of the school that you are direct, you want to uh, get the answer from, or you can leave a question for any of our representatives to answer for you. Uh, today. Also, keep an eye on the chat box because our representatives will be putting some contact information in there, and uh, that way you'll have some great grab and go uh, to follow up after today. Because remember, six minutes is just a sneak peek at what all of these schools have to offer, and there's so much more to learn. All right, well, now we are going to move on to the University of Tennessee. That there. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me do that. Let me share here. Oops, can't do that, there you go. My name is Jeff Smith. I am a regional recruiter for the University of Tennessee. I represent the states of Maryland, uh, Delaware, and the District of Columbia. 
And then I have another uh, representative who connects with uh, high schools in Virginia and West Virginia. And I'll leave that information at the end of the, um, end of the presentation and the program. But thank you for being a part of this presentation. Tell you about University of Tennessee. We are in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, the town itself or the city of Knoxville, it's about 200,000 uh, residents there. So, so mid-sized town. A lot of people ask, is Tennessee a college town? So we're definitely a college town, as you can kind of see right there. Um, hopefully this upcoming football season, the stadium will get that full again uh, with our um, students and, and cheering on the football team, things like that. On the right-hand side, you see the Tennessee River. In the background to the left, you see the Smoky Mountains. So again, having opportunities of getting connected with, with that city vibe and that city feel, you'll definitely get that. Uh, downtown, you kind of see in the background a little bit behind the football stadium, so very close. But if you want to get away, you can also get away as well too. Like I said, the Smoky Mountains in the background, uh, probably about 30 minute drive from the Knoxville area itself. So quick fun facts, again, Neyland Stadium, as you saw there, is one of the top five largest football stadiums in the country. Uh, over 104,000 uh, students that can get in there. Uh, hopefully they're all cheering for the volunteers during football season. Um, the Tennessee River that you saw there, we, we sailgate, we don't tailgate. Uh, you can actually kind of hang out there on the, um, on the Tennessee River as well too. Over 50 countries from the study abroad program that we have very involved as far as Fulbright um, scholarships and students getting Fulbrights. So again, kind of just expanding upon their education as well too. And then our mascot you see there at the bottom is Smokey. <laughs> Quick numbers, uh, undergraduate about 24,000 students that attend Tennessee. Uh, if you add graduate students, you're looking at about 30,000 total students that, that are going to the University of Tennessee. But again, you want a big college, you got that. Again, the football stadium that you saw there, things like that. But if you want small, we can do small as well too. 17 to one uh, student to faculty ratio, 90% of our, our classes have 50 students or less. So again, when you want that opportunity for that more one-on-one, -on -one, you'll definitely get that at Tennessee. Over 360 majors that we have, pretty much we go from A to Z, accounting all the way to zoology, which is pretty much pre-veterinary. So I guess A to V that we go into as far as that goes. Um, over 600 clubs and organizations, and the two numbers at the bottom there, obviously important from a financial aid aspect, close to 90% of our students are getting some type of financial aid, um, be it scholarships, grants, and lo or loans. And then again, about 84, 85% of our students, they're getting a job in their career field very soon after graduation. University of Tennessee is, is broken up into different um, colleges, academic colleges that we have here, the Herbert College of Agriculture, which is again, our fishery sciences and our veterinary school, our College of Architecture and Design, our College of Arts and Science, which is our largest college. That's where most of our majors are held at. We have the Haslam College of Business there, College of Communication and Information. You have the College of Education, Health and Human Sciences, which is where our teaching program um, are held at if you wanna be a teacher. Tickle College of Engineering and the different engineering majors. You have the College of Nursing and then also the College of Social Work. So those are our undergraduate colleges. We also have a graduate veterinary school and then we have a graduate law school as well too. So again, depending upon the major you wanna get into, you can do undergraduate as well as graduate information and programs at the University of Tennessee. I'm gonna talk briefly about the academic common market here. And this is a program that's based a lot of colleges that are in the Southeast part of the country, uh, kind of South of the Mason-Dixon line, Ohio River and kind of East of the Mississippi. Um, the colleges in that section there have a program where if you are a Maryland resident, a Delaware resident, Virginia, what have you, and you can attend University of Tennessee and be charged in-state rates. Now, the difference between in-state and out-of-state rates right now is running about $18,000. That's a pretty nice chunk of change there as far as that goes. They would be certain majors that are a part of that program. Definitely what you want to do is kind of go to that website right there to get all that specific information on the academic common market. But again, with the University of Tennessee, as I mentioned, we have over 300 in, uh, different majors. So again, some of those are academic common market related. Some of them may not be academic common market related. Up on that. Important dates kind of coming into this year, I guess juniors now kind of finishing up your junior year and then getting into your senior year. Um, our application will open August 1st. We are a part of the common application and we have our own online application. So whichever way you want to apply, definitely do that. 
we have an early action deadline, you see there November 1st, and then regular decision of December 15th. Again, like a lot of schools that you're hearing, we are going to be test optional for this upcoming year. Um, so again, high school juniors right now, if you wanna send test scores, you can send test scores. If you don't wanna send test scores, don't worry about it. That's gonna to be totally up to you. Now, some places that you might be um, thinking about saying that, yeah, we're gonna be test optional, but if you wanna merit money, well, then you gotta send test scores. Or if you wanna be in our honors program, well, you gotta send us test scores. Tennessee is truly test optional for all those things. We have students who have gotten honors awards, have gotten their honors and scholars programs. We also have students that have gotten um, academic money too. Again, sending in test scores is gonna be pretty much up to you. Visit, definitely come, come see us, visit.utk.edu. Um, we are gonna be open for the summer. We're gonna have tours um, that are gonna be available. So you can definitely do that, get the information about our tours over the summer and then going into the fall semester. And then the contact information, Amanda on the left there, she handles Virginia and West Virginia. Myself, I handle Delaware, DC and Maryland. And if you have any questions, there's our email contact and thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff, for sharing the University of Tennessee with all of us. All right, well, up next, we're gonna be learning about North Carolina State University. All right, just to confirm is, uh, can you guys see the PowerPoint? Okay, perfect. We can hear you and we can see it. Perfect. Take it away. All right, so hello everyone. My name is Juan Tante. I am an admissions counselor here at North Carolina State University or also known as NC State. Um, so let's just go ahead and get this presentation started. All right, so who are we? So NC State is located in Raleigh, North Carolina. We are the capital of the state and also in a very central location as well. We're about two to three hours away from the beach, three, uh, three to four hours away from the mountains. So we kind of get the best of both worlds. And then of course, NC State is also the largest public institution in North Carolina with over 36,000 total students. However, around that 24,000 are undergraduate students. So you'll definitely have your own community of thinkers and doers. We are also one of the two research intensive universities in North Carolina. And so, which means that you definitely have the opportunity to be engaged in undergraduate research as well. And we do offer over 100 different majors and minors to choose from, over 700 student organizations to participate in and to, and to be connected with the institution, and over 230 study abroad programs as well. And of course, we are the top 10 best value public institution as well. All right, and so I kind of mentioned Think and Do a little bit. That is the model at NC State, Think and Do the Extraordinary. And so even though we do have over 100 different majors and minors, we're definitely known for our STEM programs. So science, technology, engineering, and math. However, as you can see on the list, we are still a university of choice for students of the humanities and social sciences, business, design, and much more as well. And of course, with NC State, we do admit directly into the program. And so on your application, you have a first choice major and a second choice major. But if you don't know what you wanna do yet, don't freak out, that's completely normal. We do have a program that's called Exploratory Studies. And within that program, you're essentially exploring your first year. And then at the end of the year, you get to choose which major you'd like to go into. And so that is the undecided program at NC State. And it is actually nationally award-winning as well. All right, and so now let's talk about important dates and deadlines. And so here you can see the application deadlines. We do have our early action that is going to be on November 1st, and then students will be notified on January 30th. However, if we do have any students that are interested in a studio-based major, so that can be architecture, graphic design, industrial design, or anything that falls within that category, November 1st is going to be your final deadline. And you do have the additional portfolio along with the additional essay to submit as well. And of course, we do encourage all students to apply by the early action deadline to take you know, priority consideration for the honors and scholars program, as well as in the merit-based scholarships. And then our regular decision deadline is going to be on January 15th, and the students will be notified on March 30th. And of course, we are a non-binding institution, which means that you have until May 1st to confirm your enrollment. All right, so now let's talk about what makes a complete application. And so, of course, we are available on the Common App or the Coalition App. We do not have a pref preference for which one. All you have to do is submit one. Next is going to be the $85 application fee. So for this one, if you do qualify for a fee, wa fee waiver, please speak with your high school counselor. We do accept them. We just do not provide them. And then, of course, your official high school transcript. 
for this one, all you have to do is request it from your counselor. And then finally, your SAT or ACT test scores. And so, of course, we were test optional for 2021 applicants, but we are, we are a part of the UNC system and they have not made any updates regarding the testing policies for 2022 applicants, but we will continue to update you guys. So definitely visit our website for more information. But this time it is required to have a complete application and all you have to do is self-report your test scores on the application as well. And that is pretty much it. That is all you need. And we also do not require letters of recommendations, but if you want to send them in, we will accept that. And of course, there's the additional essay, but that's already part of the application itself. All right, and so now important part, how are the applications reviewed? And so at NC State, we do take a holistic approach when we're looking at the application. So which means that we do widen the lens to look at the different factors. And so there is no one factor that will make or break that decision. At the forefront of the review process will be your academic achievement. And so here we're looking for strong grades and challenging courses. And so that can be honors, AP, IB, or dual enrollment. And of course, like I mentioned, we are looking for strong grades. And so there is no set GPA that we're looking for. And so most of our competitive students are making A's and B's, but mostly A's. And then next is going to be your highest SAT or ACT composite score. And so again, if we do have any updates, um, we'll definitely be able to share that uh, with you guys on our website. So definitely continue to check that. Um, and then what we do at NC State is that we actually do create a super score. And so students are able to self-report multiple test scores. And then we will look at the highest subsection of each of the test dates to create that super score for you. And then next is going to be the interest in the academic program selected. And so, like I mentioned, we do admit directly into the program. So once you are admitted, you will start directly in that. And of course, on the application, you have a first choice major and a second choice major. So for this one, we do recommend students putting down two different majors on there, because if you're not competitive enough for your first one, you could potentially be reviewed for your second uh, choice and then be admitted into that as well. And of course, we do ask, why are you interested in the program you selected? We recommend writing about both of the programs that you selected. And then your accomplishments and involvement outside of the classroom. And so here, we're just wanting to see what you're investing your time in outside of the classroom. So that can be arts, drama, theater, sports, maybe where you're working, taking care of a family member, whatever that you're doing outside of the classroom, definitely put that on the application so we can see that and take it into consideration and then the background and opportunities. And so we do understand that different high schools have different curriculums, course offerings, activities, and all of that. And so then your application will be looked at within the context that you are coming from. And so for example, if the highest level of courses that are just offered at your school are honors, then we know that within that context, it is going to be very competitive. And then finally, it is going to be your individual story. And so many students ask us, how can they stand out? Your individual story is where we are getting to know you as a person, as an individual. So share anything that we haven't seen within the, within the other parts of the application process. We love reading the essay completely for sure. And as you can see, it is a very holistic approach. So there are many factors that we do take into consideration. And then of course, if you are interested in learning more about NC State, definitely visit our website. And then we do have our contact information on this link as well. Thank you so much then for presenting on NC State. All right, we have reached the end of the formal part of our presentation. Unfortunately, um, Pittsburgh Institute of Aeronautics let us know that they were not able to join us this afternoon, but they would recommend heading to their website to learn more about all of the range of their programs um, and the different offerings that they have and to reach out with questions that you have as well. And we still wanna give everyone a few minutes. We've had some questions pop into the Q&A, which is awesome. We love that. Wanted to give all of our attendees a couple more minutes to think about questions for the Q&A and to make sure they're getting that contact information from the chat. So I have a couple live uh, Q&A questions. Um, so I'd love to invite uh, one representative from each school back on. Um, I also have an update from Waynesburg University. The Waynesburg representative wasn't able to stay with us, but she said they have um, so many great um, out of class experiences, opportunities, favorite campus events and rich traditions. So even though she can't answer these questions with us live, please head to their website, check out their social media and you can get a sneak peek at uh, what it looks like on their campus. All right, so for uh, all of us right now, let me just grab my screen share. We're gonna go in the uh, same order that you presented. So great, you're gonna kick us off now. So we'll go Mississippi State, Tennessee, and then NC State. 
So the first question I have for all of you is to share a favorite event, program, campus tradition. It can be yours or it can be a favorite of your students um, to just get a little bit more insight into the campus communities that you represent. So Grant, thanks for starting us off. Absolutely. So you guys will learn as you're starting this process that we as uh, secondary institutions are very keen on traditions. Um, and so at Mississippi State, ours is the cowbell. Uh, I actually had to grab mine really quick. Um, but so this is our tradition here at Mississippi State. Uh, but essentially each student is supposed to be gifted one uh, as they're entering the freshman class at Mississippi State. And it, it holds a lot of rich history and tradition for us in terms of athletics, but then also it's supposed to be gifted to you um, by someone just to, because that's indicative of our season. And so uh, double whammy gives us our superstition uh, fix, but then also it uh, annoys the mess out of our uh, opponents. Ask, just ask Jeff, he, he knows all about it. So. <laughs> Okay. I won't go into any more about that. I'll let you <laughs> leave that as far as that goes. The tradition is, is really what I talked about um, when you kind of, when I had the picture of the football stadium in the Tennessee River. And again, we sailgate, we don't tailgate. That's one of our big traditions here for, for football, obviously being in the SEC, um, a power five conference there. And so we have on average, I'd say 200 boats that kind of hang around the river around the stadium. And again, if you kind of go to a to a stadium and you tailgate in the parking lot, we really sailgate, we do it on the river as well too. We have we have some tailgates, we have some on land, but but the really cool ones are the ones that are happening in the river. All right, and then I would say my favorite tradition at NC State would be when we, whenever we beat a big school for basketball, such as like UNC or, or Duke, we rush the core and then we also rush to the bell tower and then the coach will show up and then the other team members will show up as well. And so that's just one of the best ways to celebrate a win. And so that's definitely one of my favorite as well. And then for me personally, because we do make our own ice cream here, after every exam or midterm, I have to eat ice cream. So I I'm not stressed. Uh, so that's exactly, that's one of the traditions I came up with at NC State. I love hearing about all of these uh, different events and traditions because they are so fun and just give a little bit of that insight into um, some really unique and awesome campus communities. Um, all right, so since we have a little bit more time, we've got another question for the admissions pros. So we know that the admissions process, finding a college university can feel overwhelming. It feel like there's so much going on, but it is a really fun adventure too. Um, but the best people to help you through it are all of the admission counselors and representatives of the different schools, and they're the number one uh, resource. So I'd love to hear from each of you to share some top tips and advice that you have for students and families as they are beginning to navigate this. And we'll go in the same order. So Grant, thanks for kicking us off again. Absolutely. No pressure being the first one. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think for me, whenever I always have discussions with families as they're about to start this process is one, cast your net wide. Um, you never know where the chips will fall. Um, but two, is make it a fun process. Um, there are times where it will seem very high stress and you know, you'll know you feel some pressure, but at the same time, at the end of the day, this is your decision. Um, and I always tell students to think of it as like three different things that are individual things that all work together to help you land where you're supposed to. Um, and you just need to look for an institution that fits you first and foremost academically. They need to offer, you know, exactly what it is, what you want to study to help get you there. They need to, um, it needs to fit you financially. So what are you comfortable in terms of student loan versus scholarship versus, you know, feeling invested in? And then lastly is culturally. Um, all of these institutions on this panel are phenomenal institutions, but we all represent something a little bit different. Each institution represents something a little bit different. So just know what that looks like. And again, just academically, financially, and culturally, and see how that best is suited for you. This is really all about you and, and really make it all about you as far as going through this process. Now, those older people who live with you, I'm sure they're very great people. I understand that but this is about you and what you want in your college search process. Not your best friend, not your boyfriend, not your girlfriend, not your counselor, whatever, it's all about you. And again, there are at last count, there are over 4,000 colleges and universities that are in this country. You got two-year schools, four-year schools, public, private, the whole nine yards. There is one school, at least one school, probably a lot more, but there's at least one school out there for you. So again, don't get overstressed by this, by this process. You know, We're on, on this side of the screen, I guess, 
we're here to help you as far as if you have any questions about the college search process. But again, it's all about you. Oh gosh, I don't even know what to add to that. <laughs> I feel like there were just amazing points already. Um, I guess the one thing I would say, given um, the pandemic, everything has been moved virtually. And so I know for me, when I was going through the college search process, it was harder for me to actually visit the campus. But now that everything is online, and if you cannot make it to the campus physically, definitely utilize the different virtual tours they have, especially when you want to see if it's a good fit for you when you're looking at the different schools. And so I would encourage everyone to utilize the different virtual opportunities that are now available for like a lot of the institutions. And then also don't forget that admissions counselor are here for you guys. And it's surprising that not many students try to reach out, but we're definitely here. We can answer a lot of the questions you may have and we're really friendly. So definitely give us a call or email us um, and you'll definitely have a lot of the questions answered that you're looking for as well. So true, so true. Um, I do think you guys gave some great perspectives about just how to approach it in the right mindset for this and to um, you know, really be able to engage with it. All right, well, since we have one last question, we have a couple Q&A questions in there that I wanna make sure representatives have a chance to take a look at. Um, and I'm gonna ask one more question and I'm gonna kind of throw you a curveball, but I think you can rise to the occasion. So um, I would love for you to share a fun or interesting fact about your school. Maybe it's something, my challenge is something that's really awesome that maybe doesn't always make your presentations, but that you know is something really cool um, and unique to your campus. There's always a million fun facts uh, and interesting things. So. Grant, I hope you've got enough time. You're starting us off one more time. Thank you. Okay. An interesting fun fact about our school is that we actually have under um, underground tunnels that go across our drill field. Uh, that were put in place in World War II uh, in case anything uh, catastrophic happened. So that's a very interesting fact and something that you should try to explore. Uh, University of Tennessee was founded uh, in 1794. We are the first college, first land grant college institution west of the Appalachian Mountains to start. So we are, and I think that's, if my math is right, 1794, carry the one over that, uh, 226 years that we've been in existence. All right, and then an interesting fact about NC State. And so for me, I love a good romantic movie. And so our mascots, Mr. and Mrs. Wolf, they are actually married. And so that's one of the, like, I think that's just like the best thing I ever found out about my school is that our mascots are married. And I just think it's adorable. It's so cute. I love this question because every school has something different, has something unique, and it's just fun to hear about. Um, I, we are coming to the end of our time together today. So we just wanted to say thank you to our representatives for not just sharing those logistics and the facts and the figures of the admissions process that you know, SAT and ACT and financial aid and whatnot, but just the energy, the enthusiasm that you have for the student experiences in and out of the classroom. These six minutes go by quickly, but you gave great insight into each uh, of your communities. Um, for everyone who's attended today, thank you for being here, whether you are watching live or you are taking time out of your day to watch the recording, we hope that this is helping you to explore these schools. Remember, six minutes is just a small taste of what each of the four presentations we heard, what these schools have to offer. So we hope that you will follow up, ask questions, and get to know a lot more about the opportunities ahead for you. As we reach the end of our time here are the logistics of closing out. When you close your window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four-question survey. We would appreciate any feedback that you can provide. I promise they're really short, easy questions, especially students. Thank you for taking the time. Again, this is just one of many different sessions that are being hosted as a part of this programming. We hope that you've attended other sessions and will join us for the last round today as well. It's not too late to sign up to join us in just a few more minutes. And in about a week's time, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as all other session recordings at the same website where you register strivescan.com slash PCACAC. Thanks again, everyone, for spending part of your day with us. Best wishes in your college search and decision journey. You have a great adventure ahead of you. Have a great day, everyone.